As a longtime user of August Locks, I was pumped to test the next iteration, the Yale Assure 2. With the ability to use either the August app or the Yale app, important features like door sensing and auto unlock, the Yale Assure 2 has proved to be an even more refined version of my former favorite lock, the Yale Assure SL. However, the Yale Assure 2 lacks the new Apple Home Key feature. Currently, only a couple of locks support this feature, which lets you unlock your door with a simple tap of your iPhone or Apple Watch. That's why I quickly jumped at the opportunity to test the Level Lock Plus when it became available on Apple.com. And after a few months of testing the Level Lock Plus, it's clear to me that the Apple Home Key feature really is a game changer and it helps overcome a lot of the shortcomings that this lock has. So in this video, I'll go over the similarities between the Level Lock Plus and the Yale Share 2. Then I'll evaluate the differences between four different categories. And the goal is to determine if the Level Lock Plus has what it takes to become the new top dog in smart locks. And finally, we'll wrap things up with which one that I'll be keeping in my house and why my decision isn't necessarily the rational one. Both the Level Lock Plus and the Yale Assure 2 have apps that provide lock and unlock access, a log of who opened the door and when, and the ability to schedule access for guests. As an Apple user, you shouldn't need to touch the Yale or the Level app often after the initial setup. They both operate in the Apple Home app and you can set up automations and scenes with your lock. Out of the box, they both use Bluetooth, which means that you'll need a HomeKit hub like an iPad, an Apple TV, or HomePod if you wanna control your lock while away from home. Both of these locks have auto unlock, and this is a feature I've been touting for years as a must have for a smart lock. Here's how it works. When you leave the perimeter of your house, it'll put your lock in away mode. Then once you arrive back at your house and your phone hops back on the Wi-Fi, your lock begins to search for your phone via Bluetooth. As soon as your phone and lock connect via Bluetooth, your lock will automatically unlock. When auto unlock works, it's pure magic. It's like you don't even have a lock on your door. In my experience, both of these locks auto unlock with about the same efficiency, but they're both fully dependent on Bluetooth capabilities, which can be kind of shaky at times. In my experience, testing August locks, auto unlock works about 95% of the time, but sometimes you'll just be standing there and nothing happens and you'll be contemplating whether you should be patient or try a different unlock method. When this happens, it's usually best to just be patient and your door will unlock but sometimes it just doesn't. It's worth noting that the auto unlock feature is slightly less reliable for my wife, which highlights the fact that if you have a lot of household members or just a lot of members with different types of phones, auto unlock might be less reliable for you than it is for me. Another downside to auto unlock is privacy. For it to work properly, you need to grant the Level, Yale, or August app permission to constantly track your location. And if you accidentally force quit the app or don't let it run in the background, auto unlock won't work. I'm still a huge fan of auto unlock despite its shortcomings, but it won't be for everyone. And that's fine because there are a lot of great unlock methods for both of these locks. The Level Lock Plus is one of the first smart locks to incorporate the Apple Home Key feature. To unlock the door using Apple Home Key, just hold your iPhone or your Apple Watch near the lock just like you would with Apple Pay. Even better is that a lock pass gets automatically added to the Apple Wallet for everyone in your Apple household. When unlocking with Home Key, everything is handled automatically in the background. There's no need to open an app or pull up the pass in your wallet. Just point your device at the lock and it'll securely unlock. In my experience, HomeKey fails about 10% of the time on the first attempt, or even sometimes it'll display that it failed, but it actually worked. But fortunately, it's never failed on me on that second attempt. In my experience, I think Apple HomeKey fully lives up to the hype. It's just a way more secure version of a fingerprint reader. Instead of relying on some random smart lock company to handle your fingerprint, you're just relying on your Apple device to handle the authentication. For members outside your Apple household, Level Lock Plus users have a few different options for unlocking. For Android household members, you can grant them access to the Level app and give them one of the two included NFC key cards. The key cards work by placing them near the lock, just like you would with Apple Home Key. You can give out a card to non-household members too, and just limit the times of day that they're allowed in the house. Another option for temporary access is that you can text an Apple Home Key pass to someone, and you can make these limited passes expire whenever you want. The Yale Assure 2 goes a more traditional route with a number keypad or touchscreen. The touchscreen version is one of the best I've ever tested on a smart lock. The sensitivity is perfect, and it makes very satisfying clicking sounds similar to a Nintendo Switch. To unlock the Yale Assure 2, just tap near the Yale logo or place two fingers somewhere on the keypad and then type your four digit code followed by the check mark. Once you teach all your family members how to use this keypad, 
I don't think anybody will have an issue with it. Each household member will get their own code and these codes can be managed inside the Yale or the August app. The keypad is great for giving guests, dog walkers, maids, and Airbnb guests access to your lock. So which unlocking method is better, the keypad or Apple Home Key? There's no doubt that the Apple Home Key is more impressive technically. It's just a really cool experience. And if you have a family of Apple nerds who all have an Apple Watch, it'll consistently be the easiest and best way to unlock your door. The Level Lock Plus obviously isn't fit for a household with lots of Android users, but I'm not convinced it's great for people just with an iPhone and not an Apple Watch. For the same reason why I don't like Apple Pay with my iPhone. By the time you take your phone out of your pocket and unlock your phone with Face ID, it was probably just as easy to take out a set of keys or punch in your code. With the Apple Watch, the story is different because it never requires any biometrics or a password, and it's always just one motion away. You can put your level lock in express mode, which will bypass the need for face ID on your phone, but this is less secure and it will still likely require that you take your phone out of your pocket or your purse. The bottom line is that the more Android users or the more guests that'll need access to your house you have, the more convenient that the Yale lock with the keypad will be to you. Both locks have auto lock timers that can be set at different time intervals after the lock has been unlocked. But the Yale lock does better in this respect because it has a feature called DoorSense. DoorSense uses a magnet inside your door frame to distinguish if your door is fully shut or not, and it won't automatically lock until the door is actually shut. The DoorSense just gives you an extra peace of mind too. Theoretically, the level lock could show you that your door is locked while the door is not fully shut, so your door really isn't locked. The Yale lock can be locked as soon as you're leaving the house by touching near the Yale logo but you may sometimes inadvertently tap it as you're leaving. The other option is to require your full passcode to lock, but this is extra work. The Level Lock Plus has the smoothest lock method because you can just use Apple Home Key by placing your Apple Watch or iPhone near the lock and then leave. The Level Lock Plus looks like a traditional lock from the outside and it has no branding anywhere. It even uses a traditional key. From the inside, it's the smoothest and most sleek design that I've ever tested in a smart lock. The deadbolt knob can be turned smoothly and it detaches easily by putting a SIM tool in the hole next to it. The Yale Assure 2 has four options for the outside appearance. First, you need to choose if you want a touchscreen or a push button keypad. Then you need to decide if you want a keyhole or no keyhole. For those without the keyhole, if your battery dies, You'll just need to put a 9 volt battery under your lock and enter your code to unlock it. The touchscreen and no keyhole option looks best to me and it's the one I prefer. The touchscreens are discreet and they only light up when touched. From the inside, the Yale Assure is smaller than the previous generation, but it's not nearly as sleek as the Level Lock Plus. It looks like a smart lock and it's not that attractive. One concern with the Level Lock Plus is that the motor is one of the weakest that I've ever tested in a smart lock. It's strong enough to get the job done most of the time, but it doesn't have quite enough power to overcome a door that isn't fully shut. It'll often attempt to lock and then provide an error message on your watch or phone. The Yale Assure, on the other hand, feels solid when locking, in the lock has a lot more power and it's able to overcome a door that isn't fully in the proper place. The Yale Assure 2 runs on four AA batteries located under the black case. With the other Yale locks that I've tested, I was able to get about six months of usage with a single set of batteries. And the Yale Assure 2 seems to be about on the same path. The level lock takes a completely different approach with the battery. Instead of a battery compartment near the deadbolt knob, a single CR2 battery slides into the lock bolt. And this might be the most brilliant thing about this lock. I was initially skeptical about the Bolt's hollow body because it doesn't seem like that would be strong enough just intuitively. But it actually has an ANSI grade one rating for strength, which is the strongest rating you can get. And surprisingly, it's actually even stronger than the Yale Assure 2, which has a grade two rating. Level says the battery will last a full year with regular settings. I've been using it for three months with the boost range setting enabled, and my battery is still rated as healthy. And I'll be very satisfied if I can get just six months of usage with a single battery. Both of these locks are susceptible to picking, but that's true of most locks on the market, smart or dumb. If getting picked is a serious concern of yours, you should go with one of the Yale Assure models without the keyhole. Noise level is something else to consider. From the inside of my house, I measured the Yale Assure 2 to be 68 decibels when locking and 71 decibels when unlocking. While the Level Lock Plus is noticeably quieter and more pleasant on the ears, measuring in at 56 decibels for both the locking and unlocking. 
The Yale Assure 2 is 180 with the touchscreen, or it's 160 with the keypad. You can buy a Wi-Fi module for $80 that'll slide into the lock near the battery compartment, which will let you use your lock inside the Yale app while away from home. This will also make your lock compatible with other smart home platforms aside from Apple. But the Wi-Fi module just doesn't make sense for iPhone users because the only added benefit is control away from home, but you already get that inside the home app as long as you have a HomeKit hub. However, later this year, Yale will release a Matter module that will allow your Yale lock to work with every smart home ecosystem. The only reason I think the Matter module might be interesting is because it might help improve auto unlock because ideally with this setup, auto unlock would rely on thread rather than Bluetooth, which I think would help performance. The Level Lock Plus is $329, which is almost twice the price of the Yale Assure 2. And to make matters worse, it doesn't come with a keypad. Level has an optional keypad for $79, but based on my experience with Bluetooth keypad options, I'd probably avoid it. The keypad's likely not gonna be even close to as reliable as Yale's built-in keypad, and the entire system is gonna cost almost $400. It just doesn't make any sense. If you need the keypad, go with the Yale options. Get the Yale Assure 2 if you want the best value smart lock on the market. For $180, you get HomeKit, auto unlock, a strong motor, an amazing keypad, and door sense. Yale is a trusted name in the lock business and their locks that don't have the keyhole are not susceptible to being picked. It's half the price of the Level Lock Plus and you can make an easy argument that it's a better lock overall without even considering the price. The only downside of this lock is it doesn't look great from the inside and it's relatively loud. Get the Level Lock Plus if you place an enormous value on aesthetics or you're just jonesing to get the Apple Home Key feature in your house. It's the best looking smart lock that I've ever tested, and the Apple Home Key feature fully lives up to the hype, which makes it the easiest and most secure way to unlock and lock your door. I don't love the price, and I wish it had a stronger motor, but there's no denying it's a solid lock. And finally, which model am I keeping? Everything in my rational brain tells me the Yale Assure 2 is the better lock and the one I should be keeping. I've had a Yale lock on at least one of my entry doors for at least three straight years. But the irrational side of my brain just won't let me give up my Level Lock Plus. I'm a sucker for nice design and a huge Apple fanboy. So I'm keeping my Level Lock for now and my rationalization is that I'm doing it for further testing purposes, but I would likely be keeping it even if I wasn't a reviewer. And as a side note, I've been dying to try this Schlage and code, but unfortunately it's been harder to get this than it was to get TP during the pandemic. But I finally ordered one and I'll be testing it over the next few weeks. I tested a few Schlage locks back in 2018, but they were kind of loud, ugly, and had bad software. But the Schlage and code could be the best of both worlds with the keypad and Apple Home Key. And we'll just have to see. So let me know if you have any questions about either of these locks and thanks for watching. I'm out.